Just like a rose from the concrete Bop. Valley of death, no palm trees Bop. Yeah, how it works, that's what I speak yeah. Trying to revive the dead like an IV yeah. Just like a farmer, I just plant seeds Life. Tell the harvest right and let the Lord reap Price. They shrunk us up and hung us on trees Damn. Now we get the earth in the seven yeah. seas Kingdom seek is heavenly Gospel what I'm peddling When you at war, ain't no need in unrighteousness. Right, and what is the unrighteousness that he's talking about? He's talking about living a life of sin, man. Right? Following after the ways of America and Western philosophy, right? Thinking that it's okay, right? To live a life full of wickedness. Trying to uh, approach life as though you can just repent on your death. How y'all doing, brothers? What's your ethnic background? Y'all don't mind me asking. Uh, half black, half I can ask you a question. What's your, fa what's your, what's your father? father uh, black you black from St. Louis? Okay, okay, cool, cool. Y'all believe in the Bible? Yeah. Like, to what degree? Uh, oh, oh, yeah, we actually went to church this morning. Y'all went to church this morning? Yes, sir. What was the lesson y'all learned in church this morning? Yeah, we got to move forward. Move forward? Move forward. What does that look like? It looks like what you just saw us doing. <laughs> you think that's moving forward? <laughs> moving, no, moving forward as far as knowing our relationship with God. Okay. And, and knowing what our purpose. And, we and doing do it through Jesus Christ. And how through Jesus Christ, I agree. Order to move forward. We got to strain to move forward. Okay, you have to strain to move forward. Yeah, it's not going to be easy. You have right, to work through it, right. right. Through, through tribulation, right, you, you enter into the kingdom of heaven, right? Okay, cool. So when you start talk about cultivating a relationship with God, right, how does that happen? Through the Word. Through the Word? Through what the does word. the Word say? How do we come to find that we actually know God? Yeah, we got to uh, repent. Okay, that's a start. We got to repent and change our ways. Okay. And carry our own cross. Okay, that's beautiful, right? But what does that look like? Because you know all of those biblical what you're phraseologies. Okay. Right. Right. You're doing it right now this way. God's gave us our way, which is through martial arts. Martial arts. Okay, so so you think uh, it should be a, a single faceted approach or a faceted approach, or do you think? Teaching the word of God is always going to, uh, is better to diversify and make it a multi faceted approach. It's definitely better to diversify. Than right. You do it to be able to reach uh, people that you wouldn't even think you could reach before. Exactly. If something you can't change is the truth. Exactly. The, the truth is in the word. Right? We were just going over there earlier, right? Um, the fact that the truth in, in itself is the one thing that trumps everything on this earth, right? The, the importance of coming in and understanding what the Bible really says about our relationship with God is one of the main things that our people especially have been duped into underst uh, understanding a lot, right? The, the understanding that our people have, blacks, Hispanics, Native Americans, of indigenous descent, you come to find out that a lot of the doctrines that are taught and pushed in, you know, dogmatic churches, right? You come to find out that they are actually teaching lies about the Bible, right? So let me show you something about getting to know God, if y'all don't mind. You got uh, First John? That's right. Bring that up. First John chapter two and verse three. Go ahead. And hereby we do know uh -huh. that we know him. Uh -huh. If we keep his commandments. How do we know if we know him? How do we know if we know him? Yeah. We have a relationship with him. How do, if somebody's married, how do they know their wife? Well, you know, they know their wife technically by sleeping with her. That's what yeah, that's to know it means. Like to know somebody. It says that in Genesis. Right. That, that's, that was the one flesh of marriage. Them. Let, I'm gonna let you, I'm gonna let y'all hear this one more time. All right, check this out. Book of First John, chapter two and verse three. Uh huh. And hereby we do know that we know Him. Uh huh. If we keep His commandments. How do we keep His commandments? Keep His commandments. They say the only way we know for emphatically that we know the Lord, right, is if we are keeping His commandments, right? What are His commandments, brothers? Uh, First okay. one is to not have any other gods. Yeah, right, that's one of the first ten. That's right, right. 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 So is it limited? Y'all, y'all going down the list of the ten commandments, right? Is is that where the law stops? No, it says to love your brothers like you love yourself. Okay. You would give your life to your brothers, and that's the truest and highest form right? of love. Right. Let's let's finish this out. Now I'm gonna show you another commandment. All right. Verse four. He that saith, I know him. Uh -huh. And keepeth not his commandments. So you have people on the earth that may claim to have a relationship with God, right? But don't keep his commandments, right? Don't operate under the guise of the law, right? Of Moses, some people call it, right? But it's just the law of God, 
right? Keep going. Is a liar. Is what? Is a liar. So a person that says they know the, the Heavenly Father, know Jesus Christ, but aren't keeping the commandments that they distributed for you to govern your life upon, right? It says you are a liar. Go ahead. And the truth is not in him. And we were just talking about striving for the truth, right? And, and the truth trumping everything. But it says if you're not keeping the commandments of the Lord, that the truth isn't in you, right? So let me give you another a, a, a commandment that the Lord spoke about, right? Give me that Leviticus 11, you give me Numbers 15. Let me just show you a few, yes, right? Go ahead. This is the book. So let, let me ask you this, right? If I was to say that your diet is in direct relation to your relationship with God, would you believe it? Our uh, praises. What's y'all's what's denomination going on, my man? So we grew up seven minutes. Okay. Okay. Serving and like saying, well, they they do it this way, they do it this way. What is true? Right. So we went on the wrong path. Okay. We was led back to Jesus because of some spiritual warfare and other things that we just had gone through. Okay. Okay. So along y'all path, were y'all ever uh, introduced to the information that you all might be Israelites? Absolutely. Right. Uh, from uh, from Timbuktu. From Babylon to Timbuktu. Yeah. That's a beautiful book. It's a beautiful book, right? And there's some information in that book, right? That could very well lead you to the conclusion that you are actually the descendants of the Israelites, right? So knowing that, right, there are other laws that you have to keep, right? Like you said, not eating pork, not eating shellfish, right? Not eating things that don't have fins and scales, right? But there are also things as far as the apparel, like not wearing mixed fabrics, right? Do y'all do that? Y'all check every tag? Nah, some things y'all gotta consider, right? If y'all wanna have that perfect relationship with God, right? Y'all wanna know the Lord, right? Oh well, I, I would say there is no distinction between the two, right? The, on, the right now we're we're still under that old covenant, right? And the new covenant is the same laws being being uh, expected to be kept, except that we won't break them. We we will be hardwired to keep those commandments. So what about? The don't know the cameras, don't care about who are actually combating it that I'm uh -huh. coming across all the time. Right. How are we gonna reach them? How are we gonna reach them? Yeah. Well ultimately, give me go back to uh Second Thessalonians. Ultimately, right, our responsibility is only to teach and, and direct we water, right? We plant seeds, we water seeds as much as possible, but it's up to the Lord to give the increase. Right? Y'all familiar with that, right? So when you deal with whether or not somebody believes or not, that's ultimately not on you. Right, we come out, do our response, we, we perform our duty, we perform our responsibilities. Whether or not that person received the information or not, is not up to us. We can only do what we're responsible for, right? Get the blood off your hands, right? If that person hears or forbears, that's completely up to the Lord. You with me? Give me that. Which one? Blood off hands? Yeah, you give me that. You give me that. Okay. This is the book of 2 Thessalonians, chapter 2, verse 11. Go ahead. And for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion Go ahead. that they should believe a lie. So there are going to be people on the earth where the Lord is just going to send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie. Right. It's unfortunate for them. Right. But all we can do is be thankful and, and operate in, in, in that grace. Right. Operate in that grace and don't abuse that grace that we actually were given the truth. Yeah, exactly. say we're covered with the blood and we're not being truthful but we still continue to go out and sin right then we're not being truthful exactly he was saying to the sick what he was saying he was saying right. right. yeah he was saying and to that realization not wanting to be hypocritical of our own word because god's not hypocritical of his own word. exactly and we can't be that way if we want to be more reflection and be christ-like exactly so that's why i say right when it's when it's time to actually prove our devotion prove our piety to the Lord, it's important for us to do. It's important for us to do everything right with with a with a broken and contrite spirit. Meaning what? I I feel like I owe the Lord everything. I feel like I owe the Lord my vessel. So anything that He said for me to do, I'm gonna do it to the best of my ability, right? So that means painstakingly, like you said, through strain, right? Keeping those laws, you gotta go in, actually strain to learn exactly what it is that you're responsible for doing, and you keep that. Right, you keep your end of the bargain. You with me? But I'm gonna show y'all. Once you finish, bring this out, and then I need you to get Hebrews 8 and 8 so I can show y'all. 
Right. And what he went through to pay that fine that we don't even have to pay ourselves. Exactly. That we should be able to push through that strength. Exactly. That's what bearing your cross means. Yeah. Right? All of the things, everything that Christ did, right? Even though we might not have to actually literally be bound to a cross, right? The whole process of doing whatever it takes to show that I'm willing to fulfill the will of the Lord, right? We have to also take on their responsibility. That's what's not easy. Yeah, killing that old flesh, becoming a new creature, right? But that's a part of the process, right? Give me, the, you get whole uh, Sirach two, talk about you know gold is tried in the fire, right? Acceptable men in the furnace of adverse scripture talk about acceptable. You don't gotta get it. Matter of fact, matter of fact, go ahead, bring it up. You are Book of Sirach chapter two and verse five. For gold is tried in the for gold is tried in fire. Right. So you know about the purification of gold, right? The process of, of gold purification is through a furnace, right? You put the fire, uh, the the gold in the furnace. Right, you go. It's gonna melt. Right, whatever dross, exactly. The dross and impurities are going to stay uh, uh, above the strainer, and the rest of the pure gold is going to drop down to the bottom. Right. So it says gold is tried in the fire. Right. You have to put it through those tests to see if it's fool's gold or if it's authentic gold. Right. Go ahead. And acceptable men in the furnace of adversity. And that's important. It says what acceptable men in the furnace of adversity. You're gonna know whether or not you're an actual acceptable vessel. If you're a gold vessel of the Lord and not just some dust and earth, right? By going through that furnace of adversity and coming out on the other side, it's still that whole man, right? Still standing up tall, still standing boldly for the words of the Lord. Y'all with me? Right, you got the Hebrews 8 and 8? Go ahead. Hebrews chapter 8 and verse 8. Uh -huh. For finding fault with them, he said, Behold, the days come, said the Lord, uh -huh. when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel uh -huh. and with the house of Judah. So people get this, they, they read this, and they think that Christ already put us in the new covenant, right? People see, you know, Christ saying it is finished, things of that nature, and they take that out of context and assume that he's saying we are now in the new covenant. But it says that what, even after he was dead, it says he will make a new covenant there you go. There are, there's a process that we have to go through prior to actually entering into that new covenant. Right? That's Ezekiel 20. Right? I'm going to show you. Keep going. Make a new covenant. But did you see who he said the covenant was going to be with? Who did he say? Yeah, there you go. This is Hebrews chapter 8 and verse 8. Uh -huh. For finding fault with them, right? he said, Behold, the days come, said uh -huh. the Lord, right. when I will make a new covenant uh -huh. with the house of Israel uh -huh. and with Who is the covenant made for? Israel and Judah. Is that everybody? No, it's, it's for his remnant. It's for his remnant. It's for his, it's for his chosen. It's for his chosen. Period. Right? All of the Israelites, right, that are on the earth in the time of the, when, 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 when the kingdom of heaven is established, all of the Israelites will be under this new covenant. Right? Every Israelite will be under this new covenant. Right? Each house, the house of Israel and the house of Judah, that's talking about the southern kingdom and the northern kingdom, coming back together under one shepherd, one king, which is Christ, right? All operate in perfect unison with the will of the Lord. Right? Go ahead. Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers uh -huh. in the day when I took them by the hand uh -huh. and led them out of the land of Egypt. So that's that Mosaic covenant that we're talking about, right? He said that not according to the, the old covenant, the first covenant that I made with their fathers when I brought them out of the land of Egypt. Go ahead. Because they continued not in my covenant. Right, because they, we broke the covenant. Right, keep going. And I regarded them not, uh -huh. said the Lord. Right. For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. Now he's going to define the new covenant. And we're going to go through what he defines as the new covenant. And we're going to make a, a, a deductive reasoning. We're going to go through deductive reasoning and see if we're actually in this covenant. Okay, so he said, this is the new covenant. Go ahead. This is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. Right. After those days. After those days. Right, go ahead. Said the Lord. Uh-huh. I will put my laws into their minds. Uh-huh. And write them in their hearts. And write them in their hearts. Right? That means the law will be scribed into our minds. Meaning what? We will be unable to break it. Right? We will be completely unable, incapable of breaking the laws of God. Can we, are we currently able to break the laws of God? Yep. Absolutely, right? So that, right there, just the first portion of the new covenant shows us that we're not in it, right? Because it says, well, he will scribe those laws in our minds. Go ahead. 
and I will be to them a God, right. and they shall be to me a people. Go ahead. And they shall not teach every man his neighbor, uh -huh. and every man his brother, uh -huh. saying, Know the Lord. Are there Israelites that don't know the Lord right now? Right, we just talked about those people. Well, what about those people, right? It's going to come a time where there is not going to be a distinction between people that of God that don't know him and people of God that do know him, right? That's actually in the new covenant, though. So if, if the new covenant said that everybody that's an Israelite is going to know the Lord, how are we in it if there are people of our people that don't know the Lord, right? That's where the cleansing and purification has to come. It, exactly, but that's going to come, like I said, give me the Ezekiel 20. Uh, I want to say around about 35. Right, keep going. For all shall know me uh -huh. from the least to the greatest. Right. For I will be merciful to their unrighteousness. It says I will be merciful to their unrighteousness. Imagine this, right? There is still a judgment day to come, right? There is still a judgment that the Most High has to execute on the earth, right? So if we're already in New Testament, we're already in this new covenant, why is there still mercy to unrighteousness that has to take place? Because uh, human nature, people don't come to the way. Exactly. So but there was that there was like you were exactly about, you but know. that just that being a reality is exactly the point of why we can't be in the new covenant because it says he still when we're in the new covenant there won't be any unrighteousness yeah, it's perspective that we have thought about we, we've been working with uh, because we do teach martial arts in the dojo uh, he works at one and i work at one we okay. got 130 yeah. students he got 140 yeah. students at his okay so we've been working in here school. in atlanta oh uh, yeah in decatur okay that's power yeah, yeah. So we, I've been three years old all using that love those. and letting the Holy Spirit work in, in me right. so that I can be that example of what I do in my occupation right. to show these little white children, three and four year olds, okay. all the way up to kids, eight, with, kids with ADHD and that are autistic on the spectrum. That love okay. is what connects to them. Even their parents see like, wow, so it's incredible how you and are. Didn't you have a parent recently ask you like, how are you able to come and teach this class? And yeah, and then answer. my answer was the Holy Spirit. She's like, what drug are you taking? I'm like, I'm taking the Holy Spirit before I come in. Right. So that I can be ready and equipped to be able to properly handle these children right. in a way to be stern with them, to teach them discipline, to actually be that example and that light. To utilize wisdom. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. And through our purpose, because we've been doing martial arts for 26 years now. Okay. You know, and we didn't think we'd be teaching it. They speak with your voice. Yeah. Yeah. All right. We can go to Yeah, yeah. Yeah, please. But, uh, so when it comes down to it, right? I mean, you all, I'm not going to tell you all how to, you know, conduct yourselves with, with y'all's business, right? But y'all talk about trying to distribute this information to every nation of people, every nationality of people, right? In the Bible, when, you know, in the words of Christ, it, it's just like we just read in the New, in the new uh, Covenant, right? It says what? This information is really supposed to be for the, the house of Judah and the house of Israel. In this time. Right, in this, in this time. time, exactly. So it's not for everybody. Not in this, not time. In this time. Not in this time. Right, but in the kingdom, That's we'll be... We'll be Exactly, exactly. So we'll, so like you talk about us being that mountain that's put on high and everybody flocking to this mountain, right? So right now we're responsible for teaching each other, trying our best to seal the elect, right? We have to seal that 144,000 so that Christ can come back, implement the judgment, right? Implement his kingdom, bring us into our land. That way we can set up the hierarchy that in its proper form. Right, every and, and that way we can set up righteousness in this proper form, right? Because right now wickedness is ruling the earth, right? So we know that Christ's kingdom isn't what's on the earth right now, right? So our responsibility is to get the 144,000. So y'all know about the 144,000? 144,000 is what? The 12,000 out of each of the 12 tribes of Israel, right? But they're out of each of the 12 tribes of Israel. Though. So if if knowing that the elect being sealed is, is one of the primary goals of the day and time that we're in. It makes no sense to distribute information to anybody else unless they're a part of the elect or, or uh, potentially a part of the elect. They're not even gonna, they're a part of a different kingdom at that Exactly, point. exactly, right? They're a part, they're a part of, you know, the rudiments of this world right now, right? They're, they're, they have their ways right now. They have their ability, they have their, you know, their, um, what you would say, their provisions that's already been made for them. We're the ones downtrodden. We're the ones that don't have all of those provisions made for us. We're the ones that have to go through the tribulations, right, and, and work our ass off in the kingdom that, that forced us over here, right? And some of us were already over here and forced to be, you know, put in servitude to a, a people group that cares nothing about us, right? And we're still in the land of our captivity. We're not at home, 
right? So why, when you deal with the gospel, you find that Christ, his, his whole gospel, his whole message was for the particular people that we're talking about, we're describing, the downtrodden, right? The slave. I know, I mean, I was the true chosen one. So we were talking about it. We right, about you, it got, really you got to preach it, right. Matthew 15. No, God humbles you because if he's a king of kings, how come the king of kings died on a cross as a criminal? Right, as a criminal. That shows how much he showed exactly. for us. Yeah, that's cold. That's cold. Body. Watch this. Bring this out. Look at Matthew chapter 15, verse 24. Mm -hmm. But he answered and said, right. I am not sent but unto the lost sheep. He says what? I am not sent but unto the lost sheep lost of the house of Israel. He said it out of his own mouth, right? Now go to, uh, give me that. Give me Matthew 10 and 5. Exactly. But the whole point, yeah, is one is better than 99, but one of who? One of the lost one sheep. Lost sheep. It says what? The, the Israelites have been lost sheep. Right? So it's important to understand when he's 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 uh utilizing a particular word, verbiage, right, like lost sheep, he's not talking about the other nations, the people. Right? That's why he said the lost sheep of who? Of the house of Israel. Right. Yeah. I'd rather take that one big I'm gonna take the one big fish. Who cares about those? Exactly. I'm gonna cast that aren't are, of our people. Right here at Murder Program. Right? Exactly, yes, right. Murder exactly. We have we have people that aren't of our people that may understand our mission, may receive the mission, but the mission aren't for every isn't for everybody, right? It's for the that, that fish, that big fish, that we're going for those big fish, that big catch. Right, there could be exactly. That's <laughs> cool. <laughs> right, what did Jesus look for though? Fishers of men. That's right. That's right. That's right. Through the Spirit. Right. Watch this. Look at Matthew chapter ten and verse five. Right. So us as disciples, we're responsible for doing exactly what Christ said and and what He told His disciples to do. Right. Okay. Cool. These twelve, uh -huh. Jesus sent forth, right, and commanded them, saying, uh -huh. "Go not into the way of the Gentiles." What did He say? Do. Who are the Gentiles? People who are uh, not of the tribe. There you go, right? So Christ himself said, what? Go not in the way of the Gentiles. Right, go ahead. And into any city of the Samaritans, enter ye not. Right, because majority of the northern kingdom had already been pushed out of their land and they had been replaced in the area known as the, the Samaria. Right? What's up? By, by particularly Canaanite people. Exactly. You had Canaanites, right? Some Edomites, you had some maybe some Levites, things in the nation that moved up there, but primarily, right, it was heathens living in the, the land of yeah, Samaria. Adam and Eve and Seth, and they were no, not Cain, not Cain, not Cain his son. Canaan. 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 Oh, so Canaan. Canaan was a Hamite, a Hamitic nation, right? So you got, yeah, so, so when, you deal with, when you deal with Cain, all of his descendants died in the flood. Yeah, they were, uh, no, because that was their, that was what was, Put on the, on the I mean, yeah, they, yeah, they well, everybody outside of Noah and his family died in the flood. So even if Cain, you know, did have descendants, which he did, right, they all died. So now we're dealing with Canaan, which was a descendant of Ham, right? You had Noah, which had Ham, Shem, Japhet. Ham had sons. Their, uh, one of their, his grandsons was Canaan. You with me? Yeah. So that's when you deal with this, this talking about Canaanites, not okay. Cain. You with me? Uh -huh. Okay, cool. So go ahead. So, but it says what? Go not into the way of the Gentiles is the point that he's making to his 12 disciples. Right? Go ahead. But go rather. But go what? Rather. Don't go to the Gentiles. Instead, do what? Go rather to the lost sheep. You see that? There go that verbiage again. Go rather to the lost sheep. Go ahead. Of the house of Israel. Of who? Of the house of Israel. So it's very plain, right? Our responsibility, our dispensation is to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And he continuously says this, right? Jeremiah, uh, I mean, uh, John 18 and 11, right? So when you read other passages that people try to utilize to assume that we're responsible for teaching the Gentiles and Jews that, uh, or the Israelites, they misconstrue what the word Gentile really means, right? There is more than one definition of the word Gentile. Y'all with me? Yeah. So when you deal, or, or at least uh, there's more than one context to the word Gentile. The context, you know... Exactly. You with me? Y'all y'all understand it, right? So it's important for us to just make these very very simple, very minute tweaks to our worldview so that we can properly be disciples of Christ. Yeah, I think one of the biggest things that changed my worldview of understanding uh, the Bible and the kingdom of God more is that we live in a democracy now. Right. So what people think is that we all have a vote in what happens. Right. But then 
they knew it was a kingdom. Yeah, exactly. They didn't have a vote. Exactly. They knew the king was who the king was. Exactly. And that's what the Bible tells us about the king, the king's glory. Exactly. And everybody has to obey the commands yeah, of the king. Exactly. And, when he comes, that's what's and that's why I say he had a head of many crowns, right? Because he came through, took over every kingdom, he destroyed all these different kingdoms, and now he's the only king. Right. So no matter how many provinces there are, no matter how many kingdoms there once was, now there's only one kingdom. Right. Which is here. Y'all with me. So that's why we're going to do the commands of our king. Right. Like what they call him, the king of the Jews. We, we the Israelites, we the quote unquote Jews as a nickname for us. Right. We're going to do what our king said. do. Right. He said, don't worry about the Gentiles. Go to your own people. Right. So it's important to understand that we're only responsible for teaching our people. Like what right. you said, that's the biggest lesson I've learned, like trying to go to other people. They're not going to listen. They don't, they, I mean, it ain't for them. And it's not yeah. for them. Ultimately, right? right? Like Give me that, uh, what you got? working to get members at our dojo, we don't try, we, we do go out and like y'all are doing, we go out on the street, and share, share the word with people, and then the people that come, those are the people that were chosen for that particular space. Right. So there's a particular people, the one, 1,440, 1, yeah, 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 yeah. that are reserved for that space. Right. And, you know, who they are, we don't know. All we know is, right, we're responsible for distributing this information to people that are potentially them, right? And let the Lord do the rest. Like I say, all we do is plant, all we do is water, right? But the Lord gives the increase. Yeah, we That's, water a little bit today. Just yeah, yeah, yeah we going to. Uh, 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 your toil. You got to enjoy it. Yeah, yeah, toil. yeah, exactly. It's talk, it's talk, scriptures talk about, right, hate not laborious work, right? Neither husbandry for the Lord ordained it from the beginning. Exactly. Exactly. So, right. Get, what you got? Go ahead. Bring this up, and then give me that in James. I want to say five and twenty. Is the book of? You know about that? We we're just going through the book of Enoch because I have some visions. Okay. So yeah, those, those are pseudo epigraphal books, though. The book of Enoch, the book of Jubilee, the book of uh, what's that? The book of Jubilee, the book of Jasher. So the book of, I'm going to tell y'all something, the book of Jubilee, the book of Jash, and the book of Enoch, those are pseudo for meaning those are not actual books of the Bible. Yep. All right, so don't, I wouldn't say strain yourself. Yeah, no, uh, read. That's why I just like, there, there's some vision I had, and I was like, I only can, I only seen this in, in this particular piece. Right. I'm taking it as like, this is what I should be following. Right. Like, just making connections. Okay, I'm with you, I'm with you, I'm with you. But yeah, there are things in those books that, that contradict the actual, uh, 80 books. Yeah, because I was there some like Book of Thomas or something I was listening to. I was like, that's weird. Yeah, it's, it's, it's off. You can tell. It's like, man, this don't sound as, as in, in, a, in accordance, right, to what this is saying, right? Yeah, exactly. Which, 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 which you know, he, speak, he speaks uh, against in the Bible, right? Don't attach yourself to Jewish faith. Go ahead, bring it up. Isaiah chapter 8 and verse 20. Yeah. To the law and to the testimony. Right, to the law and to the testimony. The law, which is, you know, the first five books as well as the words of Christ, right? And the testimony, talking about the testimony of the prophets, right? Go ahead. If they speak not according to this word. There are people that are going to be teaching, but are not going to be teaching in accordance to what the law and the prophets say. Exactly, right? What does it say after that? There is no light in it's them. It's if they teach not according to these words, if they don't teach in accordance to what the prophets and the law say, right, there is no light in those people, right? So if we read so, uh, a passage, right, and it says something in, in, uh, just opposing what the law and the prophets say, we got to say there is no light in this book. I don't want nothing to do with it. You see what I'm saying? Right? So we're not going to sit here and try to, like, try to make it make sense for the book of Enoch just because it's... People claim there is a book of Enoch. We're not gonna try to make it make sense for the book of Jubilee or Jasper. What we currently have is it's, it's enough. Classic. Yeah, exactly. This is this is. Bow, <laughs> right, <laughs> right. That's a nice bike to be dropping like that, man. He's nervous, bro. He's, he never seen that many black people in, in unison in his life, right? That's crazy. You had a sound effect. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you should do. He got sparks. I'm smooth. He, he can't even keep going on this venture. <laughs> Praise the highs, man. <laughs> right? Read this. Maybe protect him. Uh, this is the book of Tobit, chapter 13, verse 3. Right? Or, or that just may be just a, a, a similar to for him falling because of y'all coming to the truth. Esau's right. kingdom is falling, right? The kingdom of this world right now is falling yes. because more of God's people is coming into the truth, mm -hmm. yeah. right? That's what they really mean, right? Go ahead. All right, this is the book of Tobit, chapter 13, verse three. Yeah, bring it up. Confess him before the Gentiles. Yeah, we're gonna be out here confessing him before the Gentiles, right? Go ahead, why? 
ye children of Israel. Right, we're responsible for teaching. It might be that Gentiles are around. We don't have a problem confessing them before the Gentiles. Why? For he, for he hath scattered among them. He said what? For he hath scattered us among them. Because he has scattered us amongst them. So the only reason we have any business having conversation and the Gentiles hearing this truth, right, isn't because we're directing this truth to them. It's because we're scattered amongst them. And they're being exposed to it, whether they choose. Whether they choose, choose exactly. Salt right exactly. You said what? We're like the salt. Yeah, we just saw it. They would talk salt about Matthew 5. Exactly. But us being a light to the Gentiles is us being in power and the Gentiles coming to us. Right? That's not us intentionally going out in this time. Like you say, not in this time of us going out and intentionally trying to bring light and bring awareness to heathens that we don't have nothing to do with them right now. You see what I'm saying? We have only to do with ourselves. Mm -hmm. Y'all, we, we, we're trying to rebuild the body of Christ, right? Who is the body of Christ? The members of Christ are his people, right? That's what it's about. So we ain't There's trying to... Like, there, you know, we just... I've been trying to go through different churches. You got that stuff, in James? Uh, I asked for James. In Atlanta. That's where I want. And I was like, I, I go to this no, place. This see. place feel, felt cool. I went to this other place that felt cool, but like nothing felt like just right until we came across the one of the people who we feel like our spirit is, the, is calling us to not to follow them and, and look at them as idols but to be like all right the, the word that he's sharing which is a uh, et the hip-hop preacher okay that's yeah go see okay this, uh, this, this morning. morning and that's he he's, we've been he's been coming each month so we've been following him and just because we went to might be 17. so our family seven day Adventist. And they went to Oakwood College, which is a college in that's Alabama. a college that ET went to. And so, like, oh there's just a lot of like connections that we're seeing as far as the people that we're supposed to be spiritually yeah, connected he's to. Him. Him. Whether it's just following because he's teaching the word and how we're used to hearing it, and he yeah. also talks like a drill sergeant. So our dad right. was in the military. Okay, and he was very so it's relatable. It's yeah, relatable. Okay, relatable. okay, it's relatable. That's that's good. That's good. That's good. Yeah, ET he got he got some good words that he teach. You know, but. I, I would say he's responsible for a particular lane. Like you say, he, he is yeah, in a particular he lane. He got his he got his dispensation, right? If he can bring people to Christ to a degree through through his his methodology, that's, that's one thing. Saying, like why we do martial arts, yeah. right? Like, and every, yeah, yeah, everybody. like we're not trying yeah, exactly. to bring people into it. Y'all are necessary, you know, so that people can see like why why do they move in that way? And then right. if they continue to ask and they find out. Like when I find out a few of the members that I, that I have are Christian. Right. And our, our bond becomes even stronger because right. we can see I've been working with these kids for three years straight, seeing and them every week, seeing them twice a week, like helping them grow, not just physically and how to defend themselves, right. but how to actually mentally right. be ready and understanding right. how to move through this world and not necessarily teaching the word, but teaching them how the word and action can protect them. wisdom how, how wisdom can protect you know, them. That, that you that you deduce from this word yeah. right because i wisdom. know if i come in straight with bible you wouldn't have no members exactly and i exactly. saw this i saw this statistic which i think is important to share it with you that um in children's ministry you know a lot of people they form their ideas between you know 12 13 you know with, with, that's when they start forming ideas okay 12 percent of children's ministry have a biblical view of the bible 12%. Only twelve percent. That means every, the other ones have think about open, that. Have right. an open world view. They they take more and of the world. So everything you're talking about, and we're showing lives. our seeds into children. Right. And then this twelve percent is the real real ones who's actually sowing that seed into them in the right doctrine uh -huh. versus and like <laughs> just what they what their world view is and their delusions. And right. Teaching it to these kids, not exactly. knowing anybody. Exactly. Not knowing nobody. Exactly. That's fair. Because they think they're giving them the truth, but the whole time they kind of giving them information that could cause them to earn. That's what he said. You know what y'all saying? Yeah. Like that 12% is... And we need more people to be able to educate <clears throat> that 12%. Exactly. It shouldn't be 12%. It should be 100. Okay. Because that's where the hypocrite of the word is. But when we, you know, when we have that same thing with Christ. Because that's where the hypocrite of the word is. But when we, you know, when we, we have to realize how much of a sinners we are. And that's what people are scared to look at. They're scared to look at themselves in the right. mirror and the right. reflection. Because when we look at Jesus and he is our reflection. But he he, he is all that he's he's perfect and we're not and we see like oh my gosh that's what I should be like right but we're not but you but like you say it's important to strain and strive for the perfection exactly. right by any means necessary try to be perfect how else do you get bigger muscles exactly you gotta lift some weight you gotta lift some weight yeah and, and and not just lift some weight here and there mm -hmm. right it gotta the be time. consistency exactly exactly you got that Ezekiel twenty five you got Ezekiel twenty five yeah. bring that out bring Ezekiel twenty five go back to James. Yeah, you can read. All right, five or no, it's something else. Verse five. And they talk about being a husband. They will hear, or whether yeah. they will forbear. Uh huh. 
for they are rebellious. Read up, house. read up to verse three. Start at verse three. Okay. Verse three. I'll find it for you. And he said yeah. unto me, Son of man, I send thee to the children of Israel, uh -huh. to a rebellious nation. See what he said? He told he, Yeah, but who? The children of Israel, right? Every prophet was always responsible for going and distributing a, a, a message to the children of Israel. You don't see any prophets in here, right, outside of Jonah, which even in Jonah, he had to go to, yeah, had to, go to Nineveh. Yeah, but, but he, was, he, was, he prophesied to all of Nineveh. But there were Israelites in Nineveh too, right? But he probably, Jonah's the only prophet that you can see that actually had a message for a whole nation, which was the Ninevites and the Israelites. But also by nation too. That's a very important thing to understand, right? So if we understand that our nation is going through a judgment right now, right? But these people, the people who did all these atrocities to our people, right? You look at these signs that we have up. These people did all these things to our people, but no national judgment has taken place on them yet. We have to deduce that what a national judgment is is pending, right? So that's what it talks about when it talks about World War III in the scriptures. It talks about, you know, the lake of fire, things of that nature. People think there's some place, some mythical place, right, in the, uh, under the ground where people go and their spirits are, are, are sent to be tormented. The whole time, that's talking about America, Mystery Babylon. This right here, this America. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. So this is that beast in Revelation, uh -huh. right? Yeah, NATO yeah. and the EU, right? A lot of people don't know the connection between that beast and the contemporary... Uh, yeah, power structure, yeah, right? And this woman right here, what the reference is. Oh, yeah, that woman, that whore that rides the beast exactly. is America. Uh -huh. yeah. Exactly, it's the yeah. Western power the structure. Representation of things, and that's because just the, the way that the, the Bible is interwoven from, from the Old Testament to the New Testament. Exactly. And how the, you got to read in between, not just this physical image. It's like people might be like, well, if they took it literally, they might be thinking this. Right, exactly. But you understand the breaking down of all the different What things. the heads actually mean, who the whore actually is. Things that are exactly. It's in, it, this is a very important understanding to have as far as revelation go because it brings a lot of stuff into uh, what you would say. It brings a lot of stuff into a, 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 a way more clear view, right? It's like I say, it takes the veil off. He's he's petty. He's petty, bro. Right? He didn't say nothing. All the way else he got right behind him in my head, bro. Ah, like he he a demon, bro. Yeah, bro. He a whole demon. He be chilling. Yeah, every, yeah, he be singing the same songs, everything, man. We like, what's up with you, bro? Right? We be skating down here too. So. Okay, cool, cool. Y'all skate? Yeah, well, we be seeing y'all when we skate, man. Okay, all praise. Yeah, now from now on, man, y'all gotta stop, man. Get this, we gotta break bread, man. Yeah, we appreciate it. Right? Go ahead. This is the book of Ezekiel, chapter 2, verse 3. Yeah, go ahead. You found he it. said unto me, oh, Son of man, uh -huh. I send thee to the children of Israel. He said, I send thee to the children of Israel. Go ahead. To a rebellious nation. A people that you, we already know how rebellious our people, hard-headed our people is, yeah. right? Go ahead. That hath rebelled against me. And the main person that we've rebelled against is our Father, right? Our Heavenly Father, right? Go ahead. They and their fathers have transgressed against me. Right, it's been generations of this, right? Go ahead. Even unto this very day. Right, and now it's time for us to break these, what you call, generational curses. Right, it's time for us to do everything we can to bring as many of our people back into the understanding that we do have, that we do have a responsibility to keep the laws of God and not just, quote unquote, believe, not just have faith. It's deeper than just belief. It's deeper than just faith. It's about putting their belief and faith into action. Right, go ahead. For they are impudent children. Go ahead. And stiff-hearted I do send thee unto them. Go ahead. And thou shalt say unto th them, uh -huh. Thus said the Lord God. Right. We're going to say, Thus said the Lord. We're going we're gonna to quote what the Bible actually said. We're not going to speak our own words. We might give an a, a explanation, right? But we're going to go to Thus said the Lord, right? To get the understanding of what it is. Right. Go ahead. Verse 5. Uh -huh. And they, whether they will hear uh -huh. or whether they will forbear. And we're going to say, Thus said the Lord, whether they listen or not. Right? But it ain't about whether they listen or not. It's about us coming out and genuinely teaching the words of God. That's all our responsibility. Whether they hear it for bread, go ahead. For they are a rebellious house. Because you can expect majority of them to forbear. Right? Yeah. Because they are a rebellious house. That's just what it is. Right? Go ahead. What is uh, the spirit that's behind rebellion? What is the spirit behind rebellion? It says the spirit of rebellion is witchcraft. Pride. Pride and, and pride, yeah. Pride. That's what got uh, Lucifer out of heaven. 
Lucifer what you think that made Lucifer out of heaven? Hold on, let's read this. We're gonna ask, I'm gonna answer that question. Um, what y'all think Lucifer getting kicked out of heaven means? He's trying to be a light guy, a bug like player. Bug okay, but what is? You, you think that was a, a actual uh, uh, angel? You think that was actual angel that got kicked out of heaven? Go, you got, Isaiah, go to Isaiah 14. Go to Isaiah 14. I'm going to show y'all something, right? Because this Lucifer getting kicked out of heaven isn't what a lot of people think. All right? It's not an angel that disobeyed the commandments of God. No, There's no angel that disobeyed the commandments of God. That doesn't happen. All right? That is a similar to It's a parable for the king of Babylon. I'm going to show you. Go ahead. Read this, though. James 5, verse 7. I knew I wasn't tripping. I needed 7 or 17. Go ahead. Be patient, therefore, right? brother. Uh-huh. Unto the coming of the Lord. So it say, be patient, therefore, brethren, unto the coming of the Lord. Right, go ahead. Behold, the husbandman uh -huh. waited for the precious fruit. And we were just of the talking earth. about we were just talking about, right? Be, that husbandry, laboring, right? Going through and tilling the ground, as it may say, right? Uh -huh. But it say the husbandman waited patiently for that fruit of the land, right? Uh -huh. No, you might plant seeds, you might cultivate, you might till the ground, you might go out water, you might do all the things, pick weeds, things of that nature, right? But that that fruit doesn't come up immediately, right? You got to be patient for it, allow it, you know, you got to allow it to actually be cultivated, the nutrients to soak up, and then you might see a, a, a finally a stem sprout out. Uh -huh. You see that first leaf, and that even just that is joyous to you, right? Uh -huh. Keep going. And have long patience for it. Uh-huh. Until he receives. But it's like you say, but it's important to have long patience for it. Right? So us, we come out here, we've been doing this for years, right? And our elders even longer than us. Right? But it's important for us as teachers and husbandmen of the Lord. I got it. I got it. Okay. Yeah. Us as teachers and husbands of the Lord. I got you can scoot over a little bit if you want to. Yeah. As teachers and husbands of the Lord, to write to have patience though. Right, because eventually the word is gonna come to pass. We just gotta play our part, right? Be patient. Don't go, don't go hasting in the day, getting um, you know, uh, faint-hearted, going uh, weary in our work. They say don't grow weary in in doing good works, right? So it's important for us to do these good works and just accept it for what it is. Whatever the Lord's timing is, that's just what it is, right? Keep going. And have long patience for it, right? Until He receives. The early and latter rain. Until you receive the early and latter rain, right? <laughs> no pun, right? <laughs> right? <laughs> it says until you receive the early and latter rain. Go ahead. Be also patient. Uh-huh. Establish your heart. It says what? Establish your heart. And you know your heart in the scriptures really represents your mind. It's important to have the correct mindset. When you come into this and you become a laborer with Christ, it says you have to establish your mind. Right? Go ahead. Establish your hearts, right? For the coming of the Lord draws nigh, because it's near, and they felt like it was near two thousand years ago, mm -hmm. right? So it's important for us to understand that it's it's a, a order of prophecy, right? Of uh, prophetic fulfillment that has to take place, but we're way closer than they were, yep. a lot yeah. right? Than see, way too many signs. Yeah, it's way too many signs, man. From locusts to things in the in the, uh, in the space, oh, in the to how the nations are, are. right? The way, yeah, exactly. The way, the, exactly, like the now way you see the signs in the heavens. Witchcraft is too strange, right? Together to make the feet. Right, and what was they talking about? Nations. What was they it talking about? Nations, nations couldn't mix together, like Europe. Not, I mean, they, they have all these. Exactly, they're talking about the 10 common markets of Europe. That's really what they're talking about. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And it's here. And it's here. It is here, right? And it's been here. But now, like I say, it's time for us to understand that World War Three is on the brink, right? And that's the, that, yeah, it is. the mark of the beast. Y'all know what the mark of the beast is? What's the mark of the beast? Okay, exactly. Right, that that chip. Right, you, you talk about a number. Exactly, exactly. All praises, right? All praises, bro. You understand? That's that real mark. So that mark is about to be implemented. So people gotta. What's up? Already, yeah, whole, people thinking it was that, thinking it was the jab, thinking I mean, it was the jab. I forget what company right. it was, but there's a company that was like, yeah, we got it in our hand. Now we anything we want from. Oh, like I don't know if you seen it, like Whole Foods or whatever. You can you, like, can, scan, you can scan right? your hand. Like yeah, that's, that's, I don't that's like that either. That's, that's giving people subliminally because we went to school. Yeah, it's, it's, it's programmed them yeah. to be okay yeah. with it. Exactly. We talked about media. We went to school for It's all about storytelling. Yeah. It's also about coming out here telling the true stories, but they can mix up and tell whatever story. Exactly. And those, but people are going to connect more with the the falsehoods than they are 
tell with the truth. Uh, and the subliminal messages used to happen in just one frame every like so often. Right. So it didn't even have to happen often, but it's still in frame. It's still going to it's still going to be engraved in your subconscious. And get so used to popcorn. exactly. So they would show a frame of popcorn, and then all of a sudden, they're like I'll, for whatever reason, I'm I want some popcorn. I want some popcorn. Yeah. It's for a quick moment. Right. And now we got social media. You scroll, and the video is already playing. Exactly. So like, and it's, it's more, we're consuming way more than one frame. Right. And the, uh, the great confusion is about the hat. I feel like the great confusion already is already happened, exactly. With the like, information age, now, now we got like the, the uh, yeah, misinformation. Pro, yeah. yeah. A bunch of other stuff going on. It's just going to get more and more crazier. And right. the kids now, the generation now, because we're 31. The they don't know what's truth and what's not true. Yeah, it is hard to decipher. It's hard to decipher. But but the, but the, the beauty of it, right, is that we have the truth and we know what to do with it. Mm -hmm. Right? We yeah. know exactly what to do with it. And mm -hmm. all we can do is our job. Like I say, and prepare ourselves, like the scripture talk about, establish your heart. Because when that time comes and that, that tribulation comes, it is going to get more difficult. It is going to get more strainful, right? We have to prepare our hearts and our minds and the minds of the people that are closest to us, right? To be ready when that day comes so they don't make the wrong decision, right? And, 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 and allow themselves to do something that can't be forgiven. Exactly. Right it's about the end game. That's what they talk about. The husband, the way he operates, right, with his plant, the way he operates with his vineyard, the way he operates with his garden, right, it's because he understands the end game, right? This is your garden right here. Exactly. Yeah, this is the garden. And like the, the scriptures talk about Israel being the Lord's vineyard, right? So we come out here trying our best to dress the vineyard of the Lord. That's how we are here doing, dressing the vineyard of the Lord, right? So that way, when it is time, when it is time for him to make wine out of us, it is time for him to, you know, pick those grapes. Right. Exactly. It's, it's, it, it, you just, all you do is dress it, and when it's time, you know, the, the people that, that are going to uh, produce the wine, they do it at their time, right? So the scriptures talk about the Lord sending reapers in that day, right? When the harvest is come, is come, right? So we just waiting on the harvest, right? But this is us cultivating those those uh, said uh, vineyards. You see what I'm saying? So that's all we are doing. You understand? You got that? Yeah. Go ahead. We'll start at ten or eleven for context. It's 12. Yeah, okay, so yeah, about Lucifer, right? That's what it was about. Start at verse 4. All right. It's the book of Isaiah, chapter 14, verse 4. Go ahead. That thou shalt take up this proverb uh -huh. against the king of Babylon. So it's a proverb against the king of Babylon. That's the first okay, thing yeah. we have to establish, right? It's a proverb. Knowing what? That means it's a similar to. That means it might be saying something, but it's not literal. Yeah, that makes sense. It's the first thing we have to understand about this, this chapter right here. I'll pray. Uh, proverb to four. A proverb. Read that again. Babylon. All right. That thou shalt take up this proverb uh -huh. against the king of Babylon. Go ahead. And say, how hath the oppressor ceased? So this king of Babylon, it says, well, how has the oppressor ceased? Go ahead. The golden city ceased. Uh-huh. This, this, this large kingdom, this, this great kingdom has ceased. It, it has uh, it has come to naught, right? It, 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 it <clears throat> gets to the point where it's about to end. Right, go ahead. The Lord has broken the staff uh -huh. of the wicked. It said the Lord has broken the staff of the wicked. Still talking about the king of Babylon. Yeah. We know America is modern day Babylon. Would y'all agree? This is I, I spiritual agree. Robert. Okay, Shit. all praise. Yeah. Right, go ahead. And the scepter <laughs> of the ruler. Uh huh. Their, their rulership, their power. Right, go ahead. He who smote the people in wrath. So f f first it said the king of Babylon, and it's still talking about the person who smote the people with a continual wrath, right? Continue to lay layers and layers and layers of oppression onto the people, right? Go ahead. With a continual stroke. Go ahead. He that ruled the nations in anger uh -huh. is persecuted right? and none hindereth. Now the Lord is persecuting them. Right, all the persecution they put on his people, now he's flipping the script and persecuting them, and nobody can stop it. Right, exactly, the same way he did with Pharaoh. Right, go ahead. The whole earth is at rest. Uh huh. Now the earth is at rest. Now that the king of Babylon has been destroyed, right now the earth is at rest. Right, go ahead. And it's quiet. Uh huh. They break forth into singing. Right. Yea, the fir trees rejoice at thee. Uh huh. And the cedars and the Lebanon. Right. Saying, and the Lebanon. Lebanon. Right. Saying, since thou art laid down, uh -huh. no feller is come against us. He said, now that you laid down, now that you've been destroyed, the king of Babylon, no man has come up against us. Right. Go ahead. Hell from beneath uh -huh. is moved for thee. Right. To meet thee at thy coming. Hell represents a, a destroyed or destroyed. Point of situation, uh, uh, point of reference, or a, a situation, a, a, a physical uh, circumstance, 
You understand? Hell from beneath has come up to meet thee. Right? Go ahead. And they talking about literally out of hell coming from under the earth, like so all type of fire coming. They, they just talking about destruction. That's all they're talking about. Right? Go ahead. It stirred up the dead uh -huh. for thee. Go ahead. Even all the chief ones of the earth. Right? All these different nations have come up against Babylon. Right? Go ahead. It has raised up from their thrones all the kings of the nation. Go ahead. All they shall speak and say unto thee. What are they going to say? Art thou also become weak as we? How, say, is the king of Babylon, has, even though he had all this power, now he has become weak as those other people who he was doing all this exploitation and all this uh, persecution upon. Right? Have you now become weak as we? Right? Go ahead. Art thou become like unto us? Are you become like unto us? Go ahead. Thy pomp. Go ahead. Brought down that pump, that, that pride that you had because you was in rulership, right? You think you had the best military, right? You think you had the uh, right. the best economic structure, yeah, right? Pride. It says what? Thy pump, that rulership that you had, right? Go ahead. Thy pump is brought down to the grave. Right. Now, mind you, still talk about the king of Babylon, right? Go ahead. And the noise of thy vials. Go ahead. The worm is spread under, under thee, and the worms cover thee. So go ahead. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer? Boom. Now it brings in this word Lucifer, right? The word Lucifer in Latin, it just means light bearer. Yeah, light bringer. Light bringer, light bearer. They just talk about who people look at as the status quo. The morning star. Exactly. That's all it's talking about. It's talking about who people look at as the status quo. Right. And it was Babylon. And, that's and they're exactly. It's the king of Babylon. Even in this time, everybody want to be American. Uh -huh. Everybody yeah, want to come to America. And I mean, even with the border, how it is now, coming to America without... Ooh. Asylum, like, exactly. Will yeah. and do what they want to in America, but their goal is to act and and think like Americans, uh -huh, exactly. right? That's the whole thing. So this King of Babylon, consumers, so exactly. Exactly. It's they, they, they perpetuate consumerism, right? And people they talk about all these different nations that have become merchants in America. We're talking about in Revelation 18, where it talk about spiritual Babylon has fallen. But it say all these merchants that have grown rich off them, they're going to turn around and say, well, to hell with you, right? Ultimately, but like you said, to buy, sell, and trade. Exactly. Exactly. So that's them having the mark implemented is going to be something that's going to make life a little harder. But as long as you're a servant of the Lord, like it's scripture talk about, his servant shall eat. Just, so that ain't uh, nothing you got to be worried just about. Just like he gave uh, the Israelites manna. Exactly. He gave us that manna in the uh, wilderness, right? And, and the thing about that manna, he made it taste like whatever your heart desire was. Whatever you had a taste for, he let the manna taste exactly like that. So everybody, whatever they wanted it to taste like, whatever they had a taste for, right, the manna, it, it adjusted itself to, to taste like that. Right. Tuesday on Tuesday, exactly, exactly. He, he and he continuously provided, right? But the, this right here, oh Lucifer, how art thou fallen from heaven? Is showing that all he's talking about is the person that everybody looked to as the status quo. Everybody looked to as that that uh that person that that should be revered, right? Is now brought down. That's all he's talking about. It's not talking about an angel. No, nah, it's a, it's an actual person. It's an actual person. It's say the king of Babylon. You see what I'm saying? But the king of Babylon, this, he he institutes particular behavior. He institutes and suggests particular mindsets, right? And and influences people to, to think a certain way. But ultimately, it's still a, a man. And it's amazing that uh, just like in America, God has been taken out. The pledge of allegiance has been taken out, but replaced with other things that. Be like yeah, yeah, and, and you know, they do what they do just to, you know, like they say, try to smite God, they try to become as God, right? And that's what they're talking they about. They try to build a tower to go up to God. Yeah, they'll, okay, yeah, ancient Bible, exactly. But they, you know, they they wanted to be that, uh, I guess you would say, that, that status quo, that, that, what you would say, what, what what's the term for it, right? That, that, uh, that pillar. Right, that everybody look to, you know, you have pillars that everybody look, oh yeah, boom, I, I would rather do this, right, than, than what I'm used to, right? I want to live, I want to strive to be like these people, right? That's what that was all about. But when he say, oh, Lucifer, I thou fallen from heaven, he's talking about a literal man that ended up coming out of power, right? And how is their power going to take place? Through World War III, uh, how is their power going to be transferred to World War III and Babylon, America being destroyed? Yeah, it's gonna actually literally be destroyed, and they going once they lose their war, it's over with for them, right? That's why I say, has thou become weak as we? How is it that you was in power now? You just lost the war. You ain't got no. There's no hope for America no more. 
after the nuclear destruction that's gonna come to this place, there's no hope for America no more. Right? Go ahead. Son of the morning. Son of the morning. How art thou cut down to the ground? Yeah, how are you cut down to the ground? Right? That's what people think this talking about. I ain't talking about an angel, talking about the king of Babylon. Go ahead. Which didst weaken the nation. He said what? Which you good, didst brother? weaken the nation. You good, brother? You trying to learn? You good, brother? All right, yeah, step, step to the I'll pray. It says what? All right. Which did it weaken the nation? It says what? Which did it weaken the nation? Right, you try and listen, learn. I can't hear you, brother. Go ahead. All right. Go ahead. All right. Which did it weaken the nation? Uh huh. For the for thou hast said in thy heart. Right. I will ascend into heaven. Yeah. See this this king. His, his pride make him feel like I will ascend into heaven. I will get to the point where everybody looks at me as, as their God. Right, go ahead. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. The stars of God is talking about the Israelites. It's talking about how he's put and exerted his, his authority and power over the Israelites. Right, go ahead. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation. The mount of the congregation is talking about Israel. Right, go ahead. In the sides of the north. Go ahead. I will ascend above the heights of the cloud. Go ahead. It's talking about rulership. Right? Go ahead. I will be like the most high. I will be like everybody. That and that goes into the implementation of that chip. Exactly. But everybody is looking at their doctrine, right? The, the doctrine of the king of Babylon and all the people who perpetuate it as though this is the truth. Right? And they, so now instead of everybody looking to God for truth, they look at to other humans, right? They talk, they talk about science, right? In the universe being the, the go-to worldview and things of that nature. Exactly, you see what I'm saying? So that's what they talk about when they say, right, I will make myself as God, right? They're talking about a man literally trying to be who everybody looks at, right? Go ahead. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell. Uh, now you say, it says what? But even though you think and, and you may uh, experience this power for a time, you're still gonna be brought down to hell. You're still gonna be destroyed in the end, right? Go ahead. To the sides of the pit. Go ahead. They that see thee shall narrowly look upon and thee. And now check this. I said what? Read that again. They that see thee. Uh, is Lucifer a man or is it a spirit? That's what y'all would say. But this say what? Read it again. They that see thee. They that see thee. Right? They that see thee. Go ahead. Shall narrowly look upon thee. Right? You know how you kind of squint at somebody? They shall narrowly look upon you. Right? Go ahead. And consider thee. Go ahead. Saying. What they gonna say? Is this the man? I thought y'all said it was a spirit. It said what? Is this the man? Is this the man? Is this the leader? Go ahead. That made the earth to tremble. How did this guy make everybody scared? Right? How is America capable of making the whole earth scared? Now you come to find out that these people are just like everybody else. Right? They gonna get destroyed just as easy with the will of the Lord. Y'all see that? So this say it say what? Is this the man? Y'all see what I'm saying? So y'all said the spirit. The very next verse, it said what? Read it again. All right. Is this the man? That's how you know Lucifer ain't, ain't no spirit. That's how you know. Now, mind you, like I said, because even when you deal with it, right? Christ himself, right? Because we understand what the word Lucifer means, he's going to be, become that Lucifer. You understand? He's going to be that light bearer. He's going to be the head of everybody that everybody's going to have to look to. Y'all with me? That might be hard to, to digest. He's a brighter light than the, the Exactly. They, they, they call him the bright and morning star in Revelation. They call him the bright and morning star. Right? So that's important to understand. Right? There's going to come a point where that role that the king of Babylon is playing is going to be transferred over to Christ. Y'all with me? As that bright and morning star, everybody's going to look to Christ. Everybody's going to know Christ is the head honcho. Right? And he's going to be quote unquote Lucifer in that day. You see what I'm saying? That's not a, the word Lucifer is not negative. You see what I'm saying? It's been put a negative connotation through Christian dogmatic doctrine. That's all that it is. It'll be hard to digest what I just said if you're looking at things. Yeah, because you're looking at it through the lens. You're looking at it through the lens of a, of a Catholic, ultimately. You see what I'm saying? That doctrine that Lucifer and Satan is this, this angel that uh, disobeyed God, right, and, and fought against God, right? He was a head musician. You don't find that nowhere in the Bible. You don't find this nowhere in the Bible. That is a, another fable. That's just a fable. So be, having, exactly. So trying to come up with a way to uh, 
make that make sense that Christ is going to be Lucifer when he gets his kingdom? And because of the connotation of the word Lucifer, it's hard for you to receive it. You see what I'm saying? But if you take away the, like you say, if you, if you bring your whole mind to the situation and take and dispel the previous doctrines. Right, exactly. You got to be as a child. You got to you got to come with no predispositions, right? You got to come with no predisposition. Once those pre once you once you realize that majority of the things we taught aren't really scriptural, right? Aren't really biblical. Then you come to find out, okay, that I had a, a different a particular connotation on this. That's not really what it say. It's come from the world. We don't even so so put in there so suddenly they don't know. Yeah, you just take it for and it truth. Grows. Just like with your plan here, it's gonna grow. Exactly, and, and, and the longer that it sits in you, the harder it's gonna be to detach from it. Right, because this is your worldview. You're really thinking that, that this Lucifer is some some spirit that's going against God, they rebelled against God. Like, and God created all the stars and everything. Right? Exactly. Well, the media and what, what the enemy does is take what God has and flips it. Exactly, you see what I'm saying? So that's, 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 it's very important to just, you know, Slow down, like you say, you don't got to take our word for it, but we just read it from the beginning. And it said, What the king of Babylon, the whole thing, Isaiah 14. Start, yeah, so we can start at the top. Let's read the top. We're gonna read the first three verses, and then we're gonna read verse four, and you're gonna see what it's really talking about, right? Go ahead. All right, this is the book of Isaiah, chapter 14, verse four. We start verse one, verse one, yeah. For the Lord will have mercy on Jacob. So, this is talking about in the future, it's talking about after all of the uh tribulation that we got to go through, the judgment that we got to go through as a nation. In the end, he's gonna do what? For the Lord will have mercy on Jacob. He's going to express that mercy on us still. Right? Go ahead. And will yet choose Israel. And he's going to still choose the Israelites. Right? Go ahead. And set them in their own land. Are we in our own land right now? No. So we know that this is future connotation. This is kingdom connotation. When we are set in our own land. Right? Go ahead. And the strangers shall be joined with them. Who are these strangers? The Gentiles. Gentiles. Going to be joined with us. Right? Go ahead. And they shall cleave to the house of Jacob. Right, they're going to know that it is a necessity to rely upon us, right, in the kingdom. Go ahead. And the people shall take them and bring them to their place. The people, talking about the Israelites, shall take these strangers and bring them to their place. Right, go ahead. Talking about going back home. Go and, ahead. And the house of Israel go. shall possess them. It says what? And the house of Israel shall possess them. It says in the kingdom of heaven. The house of Israel shall what? Possess them. Where are they going to be? I mean, what are they going to be? Yeah, what is what does humans possess other humans mean? What does that mean? There you go. The kingdom of heaven, it says what? Read it again. Restart from verse, uh, the top of verse 2 again. And the people shall take them uh -huh. and bring them to their place. Right, go ahead. And the house of Israel uh -huh. shall possess them. It says the house of Israel shall possess them them talking about the strangers go ahead in the land of the lord in the land of the lord when we go home right we're going to possess these people in the Just land like of the that, lord like people are possessing america. exactly the same way we were possessing america the 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 flip the the, uh, the, the uh, roles are going to flip the script is going to flip right go ahead the lord for servant uh -huh. and handmaid like y'all said it's slavery it's it's servitude it says the, the the people of israel are going to possess them in the land of the lord for servants go ahead and handmaids. And handmaids. That's just what it is. Right? Go ahead. And they shall take them captive. Uh huh. Whose captives they were. It says what? They shall take them captives whose captives they were. The scriptures say the people that put blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans into slavery are going to go into slavery. That's right. Right? right. That's what the Bible says. That's what does say of the Lord. Whether people want to believe it or not, whether people want to accept it or not, that's what it says. You might as well come to grips with it now because it's gonna be a reality real soon, right? Y'all are gonna have slaves, right? It's gonna be a beautiful thing, right? That's that rest, right? Go ahead. And they shall rule over their oppressors. It says what? They shall rule over their oppressors. Yeah, Revelation 13, all uh, praise, right? Keep going. And it shall come to pass in the day that the Lord shall give thee rest from thy sorrow. See that, and that's that rest. All the sorrow that we had to... Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. It says, all you are heavy laden, come unto me and, and, and burn my burden, right? Burn my labor, right? Take, take on my yoke. That's what he said. Take on my yoke. 
right? But that yoke that we take on for Christ is going to lead to us being uh, heirs, right? Joint heirs, co-heirs of the throne with him, right? So we're going to have... Exactly. We, we're going to be kings and priests. That's exactly. We're going, to be, we're going to still be kings and priests, and we're going to be joint heirs, right, to this throne in the kingdom of heaven, right? So we're going to have our own dis dispensation of, of, of slaves and things of the nature, too, right? And Might as well. Slaves were, like, then we weren't treated how slaves were when we were in trust. Right, right. But the thing about it is, right, the things that they did to us, they got to experience that, though. Exactly. It's just what it is, well, right? Paper. Yeah, not exactly. Not, not all of the, the, uh, the uh, inhumane. You know, uh, things that go against the laws of God, right? We're going to treat them how a, tra a slave is is uh, probably treated according to the laws of God, right? So he might they might get beat, so be it. But you know, we ain't gonna be doing our things like like he said, raping and stuff like that, right? Go ahead. This is the book of Revelation, chapter two, verse twenty-six. Yeah, start at verse twenty-five. Verse twenty-five. Yep. But that which ye have already hold fast uh -huh. till I come. So Christ said what? Is ye that have already hold fast till I come. It said, but that which ye have already, hold fast till I come. Talking about this understanding, right? Hold fast to this understanding, right? Go ahead. And he that overcometh. And what? He that overcometh. And the ones that overcome, right? Go ahead. And keepeth my works unto the end. The scriptures say we got to keep the works until the end, right? Go ahead. To him will I give power over the nation. Hey, brother. Hey, brother. Listen to the scripture. You believe in the Bible? Right? Listen to the scripture. Revelation chapter 2 verse 26. Go ahead. And he that overcometh. Scripture is talking about overcoming the world, right? That means that all of the wicked that perpetuated, you have to rise above it, you have to operate in righteousness, right? You have to have the proper understanding of what the scriptures is really talking about, right? Until Christ gets back. All right? Go ahead. He that keepeth my works until the end. It says you got to keep the works of, of Christ until the end, right? Go ahead. To him. To, to the people that do this, right? Go ahead. Well, I give power over the nation. Christ out of his own mouth said, you're going to be given power over all the other nations of the earth, right? So the people that did your people wrong, right? It says what? If you overcome, you're going to do what? Give power over the nation. Go ahead. And he shall rule them uh -huh. with an iron rod. What you do with an iron rod? Yeah, there you go, right? The scripture talk about a rod of correction, right? Yeah. Christ said, if you overcome and keep his works to the end, you get power over the nation and you get to rule them with an iron rod. Right? Go ahead. As the vessels of a potter shall they be broken. Why was this never taught to us? No, no, this is different. Uh -huh. Right? Why was this something that wasn't perpetuated in the Christian church? Right? We using the same exact book. But they, they bypassed this right here, right? It says that those money, other... What's up? Tax laws. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. We already know what comes with a 501 c this particular thing that you're not going to be able to teach. Right? But the importance of this, right, is that what? We have something to look forward to in the kingdom of heaven, right? All of the things that, that happen to our people, right? All of the atrocities that happen to our people. And what she said, looking forward, a lot of people don't even know how to look forward. They don't know what the hope really forward. is for, right? This is something to have hope in, right? The people that did my people wrong, right, get that same recompense of action, right? That's a just God. That's a, that's, that's a favorable outcome for us, right? It's like and when, it, um, when, uh, who was it after Moses? Joshua. Joshua. When Joshua, he sent people to see the land. Right, spies. They came yep. back yep. and told them that the land was good. It's they a perfect worked. land. But they had to work to get to the land. They still had to cross the Jordan. They had to do everything. They had to slay the giants there. So right, they can move right. There and all of that came because of a promise that the Most High made to those people. And he made another promise. He made that same promise. Our people are promised what it just said in Isaiah 14. It has to come to pass. Right, that we shall rule over our oppressors. Go ahead, read this. So Revelation chapter 13 and verse 10. Go ahead. He that leadeth into captivity. This is Christ speaking again. He said, he that leadeth into captivity. Right, go ahead. Shall go into captivity. It said the people that led blacks and Spanish and Native Americans into captivity, what got to happen to them? Shall go into captivity. It's very simple, right? You read what you sow, you put us into slavery, your ass got to go into slavery. That's what the Bible say, right? We ain't making this up. Go ahead. He that killeth with the sword. The people that murdered hundreds of millions of our people to this day. Right, go ahead. Must be killed with the sword. Say, what got to happen to him? Must be killed with the sword. Got to happen, right? Or else God ain't just. You got to think about this. That's what justice really look like, right? A justice ain't them getting to do 600 odd years of oppressing us, killing us, 
right, doing whatever they wanted, whatever their heart's desire was against our, I'm talking about, you, you got folks literally hanging people, burning them, setting them on fire, and taking pictures, right? Imagine that. And these same people, they just tend to just get to willy-nilly walk into the kingdom of heaven with us. How that sound? How that sound? A nation that did all of that get to just get the kingdom of heaven too? How that sound? It don't make no sense when you really think about it. But this is what they want us to believe. But when you read the scripture, you see that God is just. You see that God actually has a plan. Right? Go ahead. Here is the faith and the patience of the saints. It said here is the faith and the patience of the saints. This is what the saints are patiently and faithfully waiting for. That's why I said that's their hope. It's something to have hope in, right? Because honestly, if you think about Christianity, the doctrine of Christianity, it really ain't nothing for a black man to have hope in. That's why a lot of blacks and Hispanics are leaving the Christian church because it don't make no sense, right? It's like, well, you know, these folks do whatever they want to and still get the kingdom of God. That don't make sense to me. Like, how are they leading but then living in the of their own words? Yeah. Right, so you're teaching this, but then you're... You back door doing... Towards, doing yeah, all, yeah, exactly, yeah, exactly, yeah, bro. Yeah, and how do these folks get the kingdom? And, and I mean, it's like when... Um, Pharaoh, going back to Pharaoh. Christian church, because the body is it's what's suffering right now in the actual Christian church. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Like like you said, the, the people that are higher up on the totem pole in the hierarchy, they don't really suffer. It's the people that are in their congregations that are and doing I the most suffering. Like, and who are in their congregations by, by and large? Our people, time. bro. Exactly. I gave my life to Christ the first time. I started working in this church, and just, just doing like some social media stuff or whatever. And, little side job I had but I would see they were like they kind of had already like oh this guy we just gave him all the all the power uh, for it and like they, they had a board but the board you know, didn't make a decision it was up to him to make a decision right and when I tried to speak truth I was like hey you got all this money that you're wasting on marketing but right. you got to build a roof in the church right you spent X amount of dollars when the roof cost less than that. And right. When I brought that up in front of him and the board, he's trying to sweep it under the rug. Right. Because he was just one. It was his own little kingdom instead of it being part of the actual kingdom. Exactly. Kingdom. Exactly. And they show you what I, most of the people that are heads of churches, they, they do it for their self fulfillment. Uh -huh. Right. It's, it's, it's ultimately for filthy lucre. Scripture talk about people doing things for filthy lucre's sake. Right. Talking about what just to, to capitalize off capitalism and the money that they can make from the from the uh, institution. I love what it is. He changed from having to go to a temple to serve God to being a body of Christ like the tradition. Which is speaking on the mountain, right speaking now from in, on the street, speaking at speaking to the new Right, we we've church. become the new temple. Right, we're the new temple right now. Our temple was destroyed. We're the temple right now. Right, so it's important for us. This is why I talk about what cultivating and building the temple. Right, we all got to be bricks laid upon that one brick, that cornerstone, which is Christ. Right, we have to ultimately utilize Him as our foundation. Right, and build off of that foundation properly. You understand? All right, what you got? Nah, I was going to Revelation, Revelation 11. You, you, you got some? Oh, I got a group four and two. So group, group four and two. I mean, Isaiah is speaking the prophecy of what, what he's saying in Revelation. So exactly, it, it, exactly. It's into what we show you that it's a consistency between the Old Testament and the New Testament. And a lot of people think that there's contradictions in the Bible. But it ain't. If there is, then you're not reading it correctly. Give me that Galatians 6 and 7. It ain't, yeah, exactly. People just don't understand what the, what the, what the end goal really is of God. Right. So you will see. All the, think about this. Right. Show show them how much of the Old Testament is oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. in the Bible. Watch this. Versus the New Testament. Yeah. yeah so how many books there are. Yeah. And you see, that's yeah, all yeah. Old Testament. This is all Old Testament. And people think that this right here is going to contradict all of this right here. And I know what Jesus did is he actually confirmed the Old Testament. Yeah, all he did was all he did was confirm everything that was in there. What's up, brother? Right, that doesn't make sense. Why are you gonna read from? Well, exactly, exactly, brother. Exactly. So people it try is. to perpetuate that because the, that's the only way that they they doctrine us suffice, or if right? You just but even only the Old Testament and never get revealed to the New Testament. Right. But honestly, once you once you get to the once you read through the Old Testament, you have to come to the conclusions that the New Testament has to be legitimized because you think about particular prophecies that only work if Christ is involved, or, or else, or else. Right? There are things that still have to take place, right? All different. The timeline of the earth wouldn't make sense, right? The, the timeline that we in, the things that's going on in the world, wouldn't make sense if the Old Testament didn't confirm that Christ was the Messiah. Y'all see what I'm saying? Yeah. Right, right. Go ahead. Go ahead. Book of Baruch, chapter 4. Let's go over. 
Come, come here. Yeah, y'all good. Go ahead. Verse 24, 25. Yeah. Like as now, the neighbors of Zion have seen your captivity. It said the neighbors of Zion have seen our captivity, right? All these other nations of people watched us go into slavery and didn't do nothing about it. Right? Go ahead. I'll pray. Yeah, they, I understand, brother. Right, but it says what the neighbors of Zion have seen our captivity. These people seen what we went through. Right, go ahead. So shall they shortly see your salvation. It said y'all seen us going to slavery. Y'all gonna see us get saved too. Right. It ain't the salvation for everybody. It's that salvation that comes to the same people that got put into captivity. Right. What sense it make that the oppressor and the oppressed get saved at the same time? Right. You ain't. What the hell they got to be saved from? Exactly. It's the nation. It's the nation. So Ultimately, the people create the body of nations just like people create I mean, the body exactly. of nations. Exactly. Well, tribes, the different tribes. So, so if you look at nations as tribes, it's currently kind of what we're in now. Exactly. You got tribes, then you got smaller things like clans, right? Then you got families, right? Then you got the individual. We might experience micro judgments, right? Us as humans might experience micro judgments, but ultimately there is a macro judgment, or, or, or overall judgment that's got to take place for all these nations. And us going through our judgment currently, right? Us being in slavery was a judgment in itself. You understand for us breaking the laws of God. Yeah, so, witchcraft, like you were saying. yeah, witchcraft, all the different things that, all the different things that we found ourselves, you know, uh, breaking in the laws of God. It wasn't just witchcraft, but you know, just just simple stuff. Right? Just simple stuff like, like I was trying to show y'all. Go Numbers 1538. Hold whatever you have, Numbers 1538. It's very simple things that we got to start implementing back into our everyday lives. Yeah, even just like lying. Yeah, even lying, bro. Like, so li so being lying. You put a filter on and not show the true you. Not show the <laughs> I ain't gonna say, I ain't gonna say this a lie. I ain't gonna say this a lie, but I, I, get, I get the logic. I get the logic. Right? People, people put, hey, I'm gonna tell you something. People, I'm going to tell you what the lie is. People put filters on their spirit. You see what I'm saying? Ooh, yeah. Right? People put filters on their spirit, and they, they try to mask themselves in some type of righteousness the whole time. They deny the power of God, and they don't really follow his laws and statutes. You see what I'm saying? Um, Go ahead. Finish this. So they, sh so they see, so shall they see shortly your salvation from our God, Go ahead. which shall come upon you with great glory Go ahead. and the brightness of everlasting. Go ahead. My children. Suffer patiently the wrath that has come upon you from God. Here go that patience again, right? It says suffer patiently that wrath. What we going through in America, just suffer it patiently. Just be patient, right? Go ahead. For thy enemy has persecuted thee. Yeah, even though your enemy is persecuting you, right? Like y'all see on these signs, right? Go ahead. But shortly. But what? Shortly. But shortly, here it come. Go ahead. Thou shalt see his destruction. Y'all going to see what? His destruction. Your salvation is directly connected to their destruction. Just the same way that your destruction was their heaven, us being, this is our hell, this they heaven. They got it right now. But our heaven is going to be they hell. You see that? They going to see our salvation and we going to see their damn destruction. Right? Go ahead. And shall tread upon his neck. And we going to put our foot on their damn neck. That's what the Bible say. Right? Exactly, and, and that, that's, that's, that's really cold because it's talking about the Canaanite nation we were talking about earlier, right? And how, how in our kingdom, they still going to be the lowest of the low, and we're going to make sure that they never rise up again, right? We ain't going to get bruised shit. We're going to have glorified bodies. That's right. Right? <laughs> we're going to have glorified bodies. We we, ain't, no, ain't no more pain. Ain't no more bruise. It's, it's, that ain't happening no more. You see what I'm saying? Go ahead, though. This is the book of Numbers. Chapter 15, verse 38. Yeah, go ahead. Speak unto the This children. is one of the laws of God that we're responsible for keeping that we don't keep. All right? Some that was engraved in our culture, some everybody used to do. Now you see the brothers around here, we do it, right? Keeping these fringes, stuff like that on our clothing. But a lot of our people don't know that they got to keep these laws. But go ahead. All right. The book of Numbers, chapter 15, verse 38. Yeah. Speak unto the children of Israel. Right. And bid them that they make them fringes. That they what? Make them fringes. Make them fringes, go ahead. In the borders of their garments. In the borders of your garments. You're responsible as a law of God to wear fringes, right? You see the brother right there behind you, he got a different variation. The brother over there to the far right, right, he got a different variation of them, right? He got both of them on, actually. A perfect example of the, to, now I was showing them the two different uh, types of fringes, oh, yeah, I got right? You. So he got both of them on, right? He said, make them fringes in the border of your garments, go ahead. Throughout their generations. Go ahead. And, it and says throughout your generations. What that mean? 
forever, right? As long as you having kids, y'all need to be doing this. Very simple. Go ahead. To be set apart from the other nations. Exactly. And this is what makes us set apart. This is a part of the wisdom, right? That was implemented to our people. Go ahead. And that they put upon the, the fringe of the borders a ribbon of blue. Go ahead. And it shall be unto you for a fringe. So now he's going to give you the function of the fringe. What is the fringe for? Go ahead. And it shall be unto you for a friend uh -huh. that ye may look upon it. That you're going to look on it, right? You're going to be dangling from your clothes. Go ahead. And remember all the commandments of the Lord. And it's going to put a reminder in your in, in your head that you got to keep the commandments of the Lord. Right? You're going to, because you might, you might have something, some, some opportunity in front of you where you, you know, are, 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 are tempted to go against the laws of God. Right? These are supposed to be set up as a reminder to keep them. Right. So when that when that temptation comes, right, when that lust of the flesh presents itself, right, you're able to combat it. Right. It's a it's a it's a reinforcement. Yeah, they're never taught how to combat uh, against sin and temptation. Exactly. 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 And and these this is one of those uh what you say uh reinforcements that the most high gave us. On top of uh having a uh, upright spirit, he also put physical reminders for us to keep his laws. You see what I'm saying? Go ahead. And remember all the commandments of the Lord right and do them right and that ye seek not after your own heart and that you seek not after your own heart because it's very easy to do very easy to get caught up in, in your mind and, and your wants and your your preferences and you for your life right you're not supposed to seek after your own heart go ahead in your own eyes uh -huh. after which ye use to go a whore yeah because it's easy to go off and go go against the relationship that you had when they say go a whore it's talking about spiritual fornication it's talking about going and and and, and dealing with other gods and stuff like that and exactly so it's important for us to understand that right so this is just one of the laws right y'all got to go back into that torah start reading that torah and everything that the torah tell you to do you got to start doing it man to the best of your ability y'all with me any questions you know you're an israelite yeah all praise. Yeah, and if y'all brothers want some fringes, but y'all, like I say, y'all get, get, can get my information from him, I'll make sure y'all get some fringes. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We got a school out here. Okay. I, I seen like about got like a few of them like on YouTube and shit. So I said I'm just come out here myself. All praise. All praise. Yeah, bro. In power. Yeah. Some some that don't make sense. Like just the word, you know, old English and whatnot. Right. But um came out here, bro. I ain't got nothing to do, I'm chilling. I'll praise, I'll praise. Okay, so we're gonna move down right here under the first one and I'm coming back to the second one. The kingdom is just for us. It's real. The kingdom is just for us. It's real. These nations ain't nothing like us. It's real. These nations ain't nothing like us. Since birth to church, I beat up. So, how to earn her? God, where we in church, we beat up. So, how to earn her? God first and worse, I'm still a So, how to earth? We the so, how to earth? Creme de la creme. Dropping jewels and gems in the street like Tim's. We ain't none of them. Been putting in work, you check my film. Mindset used to be stuck on the M. Mindset don't flip, now it's stuck on him. You wish me, you won't fuck with them. If it ain't black and brown, we ain't fucking with them. On your own. Build power base up, get all T sun, tell them watch the throne. For the generation come, nigga, switch things up. Just hit a Christian with a million.